Welcome to Little Home Projects. In this video, we're going to hack an IKEA dresser to replace this temporary bathroom vanity. My plan is to use this Brusali three drawer dresser from IKEA as a bathroom vanity. The difference being that it's about $100 new, whereas most IKEA vanities start at around $300. Currently, IKEA has a lot of other furniture in this exact same style, so in the future, if we ever want to match to this piece, we'll be able to do that. Assembly of the dresser took me about two or three hours. I only made one mistake. I put the front legs on sideways. Uh, this meant I had to take them off again because the drawers couldn't fit inside the dresser. After I did that, though, things went smoothly. The instructions don't call for it, but definitely an electric drill or an impact driver will make the whole thing go faster. With the whole thing assembled, it's time for me to move it over so I can cut the legs off to its final height. We wanted the finished vanity to be a few inches shorter than this particular dresser. So we took our final height that we wanted and measured from the top down and made a mark. That happened to be about a half inch below the bottom of the cabinet. I measured how high that mark was from the bottom of the vanity and transferred that measurement across so I was able to draw a straight line. With a nice square line drawn, I'm able to take my jigsaw to make the cut. Make sure you use a nice sharp blade and don't push it too hard. If you push hard, it'll start to tear out the veneer of the cabinet. I used the cutoff piece from the first leg to draw a mark on the second leg. This makes sure that I get my legs all the same length and I don't have to measure again. I had to switch to a longer saw blade for this one. With the leg on its side like this, uh, you need to make sure you have a blade that goes all the way through. And again, don't push too hard. I always find it's a really good idea to put a mark on the piece from your first cut. I use this one as the master and I don't want to get it confused once I have other offcuts laying around. So now I just have to rotate the cabinet and perform the same cut on the other two legs. Next, I need to transfer these two holes to the new bottom of the cabinet. This dresser comes with four little plastic feet. Rather than trying to drill these holes with exact measurements, I just put some ink on the bottom of the knobs and press that ink into the bottom of the cabinet. This left me a few marks as good reference points, so I marked the center of those so I would know where to start my drill. I drilled a few test holes in one of the offcut legs and found that my imperial bits were either too small or too large. So I'm going to go with a slightly smaller bit and give it a wiggle as I'm drilling. To make sure that I hit the dead center though, I started with a smaller drill bit to drill a pilot hole. I then used a larger drill bit to bore it out and make sure to give it a wiggle. Not too much though because I can always take more out later and I can't put it back in. My first fit was a little too tight. A bit more of a wiggle on the drill bit and it slid in just perfectly. After repeating those steps on the other three legs, I'm ready to get rid of the old temporary vanity and bring in the new dresser. Now that I have it in the space, I've drawn a mark where my drain is going to be. It's just slightly off-center because it's off-center in the sink. The instructions call for a hole about this big, it's sort of a large rectangle to make sure there's space for the drain and all the tap fittings. Um, because I don't trust how strong this particular counter is, it was never designed to take the weight of a sink. I want to remove as little material as possible, so I'll start with this 4 inch hole saw on the front, and then I'm going to drill a smaller 2 inch hole in the back. Hopefully this will keep the most amount of strength possible. I found my 4 inch drill bit was actually pretty dull, it should have been cutting through a lot better. So I started to press hard on the wood, and you've got to be careful doing this, because if you don't pay attention you can bind up and damage other things. just like that. I got lucky this time because that whole area is going to be covered by the sink, but it would have been quite the heartbreaker if I had damaged the veneer before I even got to use the vanity. At this point I decided to abandon my hole saw and move to the jigsaw. Uh, it's got nice new blades and it took no time at all to just cut along the circle that I would already started. I located where I wanted my next hole to go and I'm going to use my 2 inch hole saw. 
This one went in a lot easier. This one must have been a lot sharper. It cut through it nice and quickly. I test fitted the sink like this and found that I needed to cut a bit more space out for the larger hole. After that, the sink seemed to fit just fine. I had to look around on all the different sides to make sure that I was going to have enough space for all the plumbing and tap fittings to go in, and everything seemed like it was good. I found it to be much easier to attach the tap to the sink before attaching the sink to the vanity. This gave me lots of space to work, and now I'll just have to pay special attention when I'm feeding the tap hoses through the hole and make sure I don't get any of the silicone all over the place. I didn't record attaching the taps to the sink because that'll be different depending on the tap that you choose to use. The instructions for the sink say that you have to fill this inside gap up completely. It's about a half inch of silicone all the way around. Attaching the sink to the top of the vanity with all the silicone is probably the trickiest part of the entire thing. If you put it down in the wrong spot, you'll smear silicone everywhere and it's very difficult to clean up. So you've got to be nice and straight and lined up when it hits the sink. There is a bit of space to adjust, but try and align it as tight as possible right off the bat. My fitting seems pretty good. I still went ahead with a tape measure and make sure to make sure that it was in the center overall. I found that I had to wiggle it around just a little bit, just a, an inch here or there total and it worked out just fine. When you're sure you're happy with its final position, give it a firm press into the countertop. This will squeeze out some of the silicone, but you'll want to do that anyway because you want to make sure no water can get underneath the sink. I use my finger to smooth out the silicone. I like to keep a wet rag on hand though. I find having a damp finger helps keep the silicone from sticking to my skin. I'm definitely not a professional when it comes to this finishing work. I find I have to wing it each time. It's very easy to mess up this silicone because it's so sticky. Uh, if you start to smear it in the wrong direction, it gets everywhere, so it's, it takes a bit of practice to do this right. Um, I spend a bit of time cleaning it up, and where I found spaces that my finger couldn't smooth out the silicone because it wasn't enough, I had to add a bit of extra. I added silicone wherever there seemed to be not enough, and then used my finger again to smooth it all out. Um, the whole process for me probably took 10 or 15 minutes just to get it looking pretty. But this, this is something you want to spend some time on. Um, my wife would spot this right away if it wasn't done nice. So just make sure it looks good. Once you've finished cleaning up all the silicone edges, stop touching it. Every time you touch it, you're going to smear it around a little bit differently. Also, you want to make sure you don't bump the sink at this point, so it's time to let the silicone set and cure for 24 hours before you do any additional work. I'm going to come back tomorrow and start hooking up the drain and the taps. One side note that I'll just comment on, when I put the vanity down in this space here, I put a couple pieces of paper against the wall, just to keep it from sitting against the wall completely. Later on, I'll come back with a bit of silicone, and that way the floor and the vanity will be able to flex without squeaking against the wall. So it's the next day and I've cut an access point in the back of the vanity. I've also gone ahead and set up the drain pipe that came with the sink and I bought two braided hoses from Home Depot and attached the hot and cold taps. I only had to notch out a small amount on the top to allow for the drain to get behind the vanity. Uh, this low profile drain that comes with the sink works quite well for this. Looking behind the vanity you can see how the hoses and drain pipe are all set up. Um, basic U-bend uh, going from a one inch pipe to a one and a half inch pipe connector and taps for my hot and cold. This whole piece in the end is going to be covered by a shelf so it won't be visible. You can also see on the drawer here that I've had to cut a bit of a notch out of that as well. This is to allow the clearance for the drain pipe as the drawer pulls in and out. You can see that there. I'm going to finish this video here. For the next video I'm going to tackle the shelf that's going to go on the back of the vanity. If you'd like to see that video, hit subscribe, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Things that I've learned in the making of this project is that the quality difference between a vanity and a dresser may be in the materials being used. The veneer is probably thinner on this, as well as the particle board is more porous, and I'm concerned it won't do well with the moisture of the bathroom. I'll post an updated video about this once I put this vanity through its paces. Thanks again for watching my video. This has been Little Home Projects. 
See you soon.